The one thing about bureaucratic implementation of law is that sometimes it just falls flat. Sometimes it just does not work out. So just because the policy formulation looks good on paper, it doesn't always translate into a successful carrying out of a law. So hence the quote, the best laid schemes of mice and men often go awry. Now I want to talk about why policy doesn't always get implemented well. There could be a design flaw and this just simply means that Congress didn't get it right when they wrote it. Maybe they couldn't get it right when they wrote it because adding more details into the law would cause the other party to not vote for it. Maybe part of the design flaw is based off of the fact that Congress didn't work out the details because they needed to compromise. There's a lack of a clear uh, um, objective or goal. Congress, again, even though laws are 800 to 1,000 pages long, Congress will give a broad goal and they'll leave it up to the bureaucracy, which uses their administrative discretion, to figure out how to make the goal happen. An example of that is Title IX. Title IX says, No person in the U.S. shall, on the basis of sex, be excluded from participation in any educational program receiving federal funding. Now, Congress wrote that, and that sounds like a great idea. Let's not discriminate based on sex when it comes to education. But what is considered an educational program? Are sports an educational program? Does that mean that women can play on men's teams? Or does that mean for every guy's team, you have to have, say, like a field hockey team? So if you have football, you've got to have women's field hockey. Um, so it is up to the secretary. Was the uh, it's up to the Secretary of Education to decide how to carry out Title IX and what that's going to look like and come up and use his discretion and come up with the standard operating procedures to carry that out. But if he's lost and really doesn't, it, you know, if he doesn't really know what Congress's goal was, it's going to be even harder for the Secretary of Education to carry out that law. There could be a lack of resources. Even though the bureaucracy seems bloated and overstaffed and that we it spends a lot of money, it often lacks the staff numbers, the training, the funding, and supplies to carry out the tasks that it's been assigned. Uh, why doesn't Congress just give the agencies the resources they need? All right, and you need to know these, and I'm going to do, I can't type it up here, so make sure that you listen to get the three reasons why Congress doesn't give the agencies the resources they need. First, interest groups and other interested groups put pressure on Congress to not assist an agency that will regulate or inspect that interested group. Okay, so let's say Monsanto, the agribusiness, has a lobbyist in Washington. They're going to put pressure on Congress to not give assistance to the U.S. Department of Agriculture or to the Food and Drug Administration that's going to regulate or inspect Monsanto. Okay, so interest groups don't want those resources to get to the agencies. That's the first example of lack of resources or why Congress doesn't give it. Two, this is the easy one. We don't have the money. We have a major deficit and a huge national debt. Three, people want to downsize the government. Public opinion reflects that we want to make the federal government smaller, so Congress wants to satisfy public opinion. Now, some examples of situations where you have a lack of resources. Um, Iraq. When we were fighting in Iraq, U.S. troops had insufficient body armor and armored Humvees to protect their against IED attacks. 
So even though we had a good idea about being on the ground and assisting in the stability and safety and security of Iraq, we didn't have the resources needed to carry out that goal. Uh, the National Guard. The National Guard, we were spent, um, sending the National Guard overseas to fight in Iraq and Afghanistan, so we only had the third of the equipment and the National Guard to respond to natural disasters like Katrina. All right, so they didn't have resources. Now with authority, authority means power, right? INS and ICE. The Immigration Naturalization Service and the Immigration Customs Enforcement Agency, they lack the computers, the people, the weapons. They can't track the immigrants who overstay their visa. They can't really arrest people, so they don't even have the power to um, do their job. And uh, they don't even allow these people to be armed. So even if they were to come across a Mexican drug cartel, they don't even have the authority or the resources to properly stop them from getting into the border. Um, the FDA. Uh, FDA is supposed to implement safety standards on food and drugs. The FDA doesn't do its own testing and it relies on the companies that they oversee to give them test results. FDA can't subpoena documents. FDA can't test. So the FDA lacks authority to carry out the laws, the rules, and the regulations that they're meant to um, control. Uh, again, I hate to keep on going back to the Affordable Health Care Act, but that's an example of uh, the lack of a clear objective or goal. When Congress wrote the Affordable Health Care Act, it wasn't clear what was going, like they didn't even answer some of the major questions about implementing the Affordable Health Care Act because they were afraid that if they answered those questions, the law wouldn't be passed. So they left out a clear objective. Okay, now an example of a law that was implemented well is the Voting Rights Act, example of policy done right. Okay, the goal was clear. Register large numbers of black voters in the South, in states that had a history of voting discrimination. Implementation was straightforward. Send people from the federal government into those southern states to register black people to vote. The authority of the implementation was clear. You had the support of U.S. Marshals and you had the support of the Attorney General. So there was a Civil Rights Division of the Department of Justice that the Attorney General oversees and they were going to make sure that black people were registered and able to vote. Resources were available and the authority was concentrated. You knew it was the Department of Justice that's responsible for carrying out the Voting Rights Act, particularly their Civil Rights Division. And all, um, yeah, there was no expense spared to make sure that this demographic of people were able to vote. So all of these um, aspects contributed to the fact that the Voting Rights Act was successful. Okay, uh, the Federal Register is an important part of standard operating procedures and implementing law. The Federal Register is online now, and it used to be printed out, but any time Anybody in the bureaucracy wants to change a standard operating procedure or how they do things, they have to publish it first. So before they start to change the way they implement or carry out a law, they have to be, it has to be made known. Okay, so the Procedure Act of 1946 established the Federal Register. Um, any law change, or excuse me, any rule or regulation change has to go in the Federal Register before it begins. It is subject to judicial review. And then people like me and you, we can notice and comment. So we notice a rule change and then we can make comments or file complaints about the rule change. For example, the IRS right now has a rule change uh, and a regulation change in the Federal Register that we could notice and comment on currently. The IRS, about six months ago, 
over the summer gotten a lot of heat about the fact that they were auditing or double checking the tax records of 501c4 organizations that were affiliated with the Tea Party. Now remember, those 501c4 organizations are nonprofit groups that can um, spend money on advertising or independent expenditures on issue ads during campaigns. So the IRS was targeting or monitoring the activities of these Tea Party groups and it was exposed. And the Tea Party said this is biased, this isn't right, you need to look at all 501c4 organizations the same way or you don't look at any of them at all. So the IRS has currently submitted a change in how they're going to regulate 501c4 organizations in the Federal Register and those Tea Party organizations or even liberal organizations can make comments about the rule change. Okay, I'm going to stop right here. We'll pick this part up in the next video.